Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll dive into Thor's DPS build for PvE. The God of Thunder Thor is a melee physical skill damage dealer that can inflict massive amounts of wind element damage to nearby enemies, mainly with his hammer called Molnir. If you missed our previous discussion regarding Thor's skill mechanics and an analysis of his pros and cons, you can find the video link below. This time, we'll cover everything you need to know from stats, runes, gears, cards, upgrades, and battle setup to guide you in optimizing your Thor character for PvE. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, for attribute point distribution, prioritize maximizing strength for increasing physical attack and to boost the upper limit of Thor's damage fluctuation. Next, max out luck as well as it boosts the lower limit of Thor's damage fluctuation. As for the remaining attribute points, the allocation will largely depend on your chosen cards and gears. As an example, if you're using a Zanubi card in your garment, then it's more beneficial to put extra points on Dex and Int to gain more skill damage. You may also want to put some points on Vit for a bit of survivability. As for damage modifiers, these are the ones that can further boost Thor's damage output. Additionally, when clearing instances, you will need at least 200% ignore physical death, 80% physical pen, 50% skill damage, and 90% wind element damage. This is because most of the newer instances have higher wind damage reduction. Up next, let's take a look at Thor's runes. Maxing out his core passive skill to level 7 would be most optimal, as it increases the frequency of his attacks and prevents him from being interrupted while channeling skills. If you've already activated the second line effect of all his runes, then you may aim for a high first line value on the following runes. First is the star rune for lightning gravity, which extends its casting range from 5.1 meters to up to 8 meters. Next is the S rune for the power of thunder, which boosts Thor's strength and luck stats by up to 50 points. Then we have the S rune for storm barrier, which increases the base shield value by up to 20% of his max HP. It's also nice to have high values for the star runes of Billion Lightning and Storm Trial to boost their damage output. As for the S rune of Supercharge, it's more PvP oriented so it's of lower priority to aim for a high first line value. For attribute runes, prioritize leveling up the following for improving damage. And for Arcane runes, I recommend getting the White Blade rune and War Preparedness rune. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. First for a weapon, Thor's exclusive weapon Last Twilight would be the best option since it doesn't only boost his offensive stats but also his core passive skills damage. Additionally, its tier 5 upgrade offers a 15% movement speed boost whenever he is channeling his skills. Here are the materials for crafting the base weapon Dark Finale. And these are the materials for synthesizing it into Last Twilight and upgrading to tier 5. His weapon should be enchanted with Morale 4 or Sharp Blade 4 and inlaid with Drake Star card. For offhand, I mainly prefer a Dragon Bone Shield with 18% physical damage as main equipment and Skeleton Bracer as phantom equipment. But if lacking Ignore Physical Death, then just swap with Voodoo Blade or Rosa Chain. It should be enchanted with Armor Breaking 4 or High PDI stat and inlaid with any of the following cards. For armor, you may either use a Dream Eater's Disguise with 20% elemental damage if lacking wind damage, or a Voodoo Armor with 15% physical pen or 20% damage to large size if lacking ignore physical death. As for the Phantom Equipment slot, you may use any of the following Sith Armors. You should be enchanted with Morale 4 and High PDI, and inlaid with Molten Colossus card, Poitata Star card, or Blue Moon Witch card. For Garment, the best in slot is Brave Warrior's Pauldron with 12% skill damage for main equipment and White Duke's Manteau for phantom equipment. Your garments should be enchanted with high PDI and inlaid with any of the following cards depending on the stat you're lacking. For food gear, the options for main equipment are Dragon Slayer War Boots with 6% physical pen or Overlord War Boots with 6% physical damage. While for phantom equipment, you may either use a little fairy slippers or St. Mary's cloth shoes. Your food gear should be enchanted with high PDI and inlaid with Swordsman Senya MVP card. For accessories, I recommend using Pendant of Eugene with 4.5% physical damage or Gold Earring with 4.5% pen for the main equipment slot. As for the phantom equipment slot, my top options are Hermit's Bundle, Cat Paw Stamp, and Ring of Contract. All accessories should be enchanted with Sharp Blade 4 or High PDI stat and inlaid with Devil Governor card plus one of the following cards. 
per head where these are my top picks for each slot. Just choose depending on availability and the stat you're lacking. As for headwear enchantment, aim for morale fort enchant on your face and back items and sharp blade fort enchant on your tail item. As for headwear card, the machine dragon wing card would be the best in slot. Up next here are the other upgrades that you can invest in to further boost your damage. For Acer Monument, activating all the nodes will grant the following stats. Total B you get 30% wind damage, 16% physical damage, 15% ignore physical death, and 15% physical attack. For guild buffs, maxing out your blessings and prayers will grant additional raw physical attack, physical pem, ignore physical death, and wind damage. For Oracle Mirror Extract, the options are Combustible Knife for Physical Pen, Glucose Arm for Damage to MVP, Chief Thing's Axe for Ignore Physical Death, Claw for Physical Attack Percent, or Wind X for Wind Damage. For Ancient Relics, you may equip the Lord of Vain or Era Fire Seed for enhancing damage output, but personally I prefer using Horn of the Unyielding or Hill Swing for improving survivability. For multi job, you can unlock the following classes to get more strength and luck. And for Adventure Handbook, you can focus on collecting items and achievements that grant physical attack when unlocked or deposited. Finally, let's take a look at some tips for using Thor in battle. First, place the following skills on the manual skill bar. For the auto skill bar, I prefer putting 10,000 Thunder, the Power of Thunder, and Storm Barrier so they can be casted automatically after the cooldown has finished. Once you've arranged your skills, use the following consumables which can help boost your damage output. Before initiating combat, activate the Power of Thunder and Storm Barrier buffs. After that, you can start channeling 10,000 Thunder, which is Thor's primary damaging skill that synergizes with his small near core passive. While channeling, you can manually cast your other non-channeling skills such as Lightning Gravity to pull and gather mobs, and Storm Trial and Billion Lightning for additional sources of damage. Take note that if your character is moving, the skills in your auto skill bar will not be activated automatically. Thus, it's better to stay in one position and only move when necessary. Lastly, if you need to recover HP and SP or to reduce the cooldown of your skills, then channel Divine Resonance manually. So that's it for my Thor DPS build guide for PvE. Building Thor will definitely enhance your party's performance in White Star Airship due to his unique monster gathering mechanics and high wind damage output that can scatter to multiple mobs randomly. Please feel free to leave a comment if you have any question or suggestion. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.